And we're back uh, with the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, of course. Um, as we start to look at what the papers have to say, Mercy uh, Pupo is here. And of course, uh, we're joined by Tunde Kolabole, uh, who is uh, our guest analyst this morning, joining us live via Zoom. Good morning, Chief Mr. Kolabole. Good morning, my brother. Hope you have a nice night. Oh, yes. Nice night, absolutely, yes, absolutely. And oh, hope you did too. Thank God for that. All right. Right. Tunde Kolawale, it's good to have you join us. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. All right, we'll start things off with a look at the Nation newspaper this morning. Uh, the following headlines on the front page of the Nation. Wiki to Rivers, PDP, await directive on presidential poll. All right, uh, <laughs> interesting times for uh, politics in Nigeria. Wiki to Rivers, PDP, await Directive on presidential poll will tell you who to vote for, is what he's saying. It will tell you who to vote for. He's quoted as saying under that headline, you will vote for our governor, our senatorial candidates, House of Representatives, and Assembly candidates. Then the other one, I will come to tell you where you will vote. Okay. Um, more from the nation. Contempt. Court jails IG for three months. I've been refreshing my feed to see if the police have arrested him. I haven't seen so. And Delicate backtracks on sack and demotion others. Uh, uh, right. Federal government workers to enjoy 14-day paternity leave. We said that in a top trading segment. Uh, Senegal through to round of 16 at Qatar World Cup. I remember uh, when Lai Mohammed, information minister, said Senegal in reaction to that uh, uh, CNN question on who had who invented jollof rice. More from the nation. Petrol's X depot price now 210 naira per liter. Picture of the NNPCL uh, Group CEO. Uh, may God help us. Uh, NMMA honors. Okay, and comments from the nation. Wish them the best. Congratulations to them. Tilbu has no plan to return capital to Lagos, says APC. Uh, party launches portal to raise funds for campaign. I saw you know the faces of some of those there they didn't seem like they believed in what was happening you know the fund crowdfunding portable can donate you know money to uh, the campaign it didn't seem like they really believed <laughs> in what was going on i mean these guys have money already honestly all right let's leave the nation for now and move on to the next paper all right uh, on the punch would be what we're looking at but we also need to give credit to senegal you know if you talk about jollof rice uh, we give it to them. That's where it originated from, a community called Wolof. And uh, it was named after it. But it feels like Love. Nigeria. Wolof. <laughs> okay. Oh, 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 the Wolof. Wolof, okay. yes. Okay. So okay. that's okay. that's okay. where Jollof rice. Nigeria is saying, you know, it's Jollof rice. Well, let's move away from Jollof. It feels like we're hungry. But <laughs> looking at the punch, it says, <laughs> import duty controversy, private jet owners sue government over 30 billion uh, Nara tax, that's a lot. If the government has this amount of money, why are we complaining about resources? Underneath, 17 business moguls, banks, others move to stop a government from grounding luxury jets. Aircraft owners sue government with foreign registered firms, trustees and cease payment illegal. NCAA, customs await court papers. Abuja court plans to set hearing date for suit. These are the riders you find underneath the bold caption. Depot sells 220 naira per liter. Marketers projected or project 350 naira per liter pump price. We're talking about petrol now. It's a lot. So I saw a tweet when someone was complaining about how did I get to buy petrol for 170 naira. Ipman, others decry jump in landing cost or uh, and foresee gloomy uh, Christmas. Okay, no, that's not good. And away from that, 87% of Nigeria's rural roads deplorable. W, uh, that's the World Bank is quoted to say, I was going to say WHO, but it's the World Bank. But do we need the World Bank to tell us? Budget padding allegation senseless, says the finance minister, that's Ahmed Lawan. NDLEA, NAB suspected drug baron and brother flees. Uh, there's a pictorial representation of, you know, that. And 
that's it this morning on the Punch newspaper. All right, we'll take a few of the headlines on the Daily Trust so we can quickly go to our guest. Uh, Russia Ukraine war, weapons being smuggled to Lake Chad region, Buhari. Uh, the paper leads with that story. Calls for tighter border security, task regional force to end terrorism. Uh, military expresses commitment to operations. Nigeria spends $209 million on MNJTF in six years. Well, away from that, we'll just quickly take a look at the next paper, and which is the this day paper. In face of oil thefts, CBN's RT200 initiative records 4.987 billion inflow. Uh, that's the much we can take on this day newspaper. All right, today Kolo is still standing by. Uh, Mr. Kolo, well, let's look at, uh, uh, start with what's happening, what the nation newspaper is looking at this morning. Uh, show, reminding us of what's been happening in River State. Um, what are your thoughts on the stance by the governor so far? Um, he's not yet made his mind on whom Rivers people will vote for um, in, in 2023. But a uh, question I'd like to ask is, is Wiki pushing his, um, his powers too far? Uh, is it that when the governor says vote for maybe a PDP presidential candidate automatically, all the people in River State will vote for, that person will win? Um, is, is he that influential? Or is any governor that influential to really, by his words, determine who people will vote for? Well, honestly speaking, that outburst from uh, Governor Nowike is uh, very shocking to me. It would appear to me that Governor Nowike is uh, playing God, that he can determine whom the average uh, registered voter in River State, I mean, in River State, uh, can vote for. I'm not too sure that the governor has that kind of leverage over the entire people of uh, River State. At best, he could uh, call or appeal or pressurize or force members of the, his political party and some of his inner caucus members to vote for a particular candidate, but not the entire people of River State. If individuals can compel voters to vote for a particular candidates and all that, the implication is that uh, we don't have the democracy in Nigeria and that we will not be having a free and fair election in River State. So, uh, with the way we can join about this thing, I have very, very strong feeling that um, other candidates, other political parties will get ready for him and do whatever it takes to trap whatever dictation we can might want to be um, doing to the people of uh, River State. He should, uh, for God's sake, stop playing God. Okay, Chunda Kolowe, you talked about other parties before Mr. comes in quickly. Um, uh, yeah. uh, if, the, if things continue the way they are going in River State, you might not have the complement of those other parties in the next uh, general election, it might just be uh, the PDP or maybe some other parties. As, as we stand, uh, APC's presidential candidate was taken to court, uh, and what happened in 2019 is happening again. He's uh, been told by the court that he cannot stand in that election. That's the APC presidential candidate. The other parties are also facing court cases. I think a court party is in court also. There's a bid to stop him from running. Apart from that, the governor signed two executive orders. One of them stops the parties from um, uh, holding their, hosting their campaign offices in residential areas. And we know how our country is, because of lack of planning, a lot of these big men convert their, their, their buildings in residential areas to campaign offices. It's been happening for, for, for decades now. The second one is if you want to campaign in the state, you have to have a written permit uh, from the state government and you pay five million naira. Um, so if, if care is not taken, the parties may not be able to campaign freely because one of the party has received, a few of them, I think at least two, have received letters from the government of River State telling them they can't hold their campaign meetings in the offices and threatening to shut them down and possibly seize their CFO. Uh, hotels in Port Harcourt today may also be afraid to host their political meetings or uh, fear of being shut down by the government of River. So what do you say to all of this? <laughs> Honestly speaking, I have looked at the Nigerian Constitution. I've also looked at the Electoral Act. And I think I'm also conversant with the regulations that INEC has drawn up for the 2023 elections. All the actions that the WIKE has been taking in River State 
are not in tandem with all these laws and regulations that I have uh, mentioned. Uh, asking people not to have uh, their offices in certain places, uh, asking them, I mean, closing down people's uh, campaign uh, headquarters, and all manners of people, all manners of asking people to, 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 to register for certain things or the other. We must not forget that uh, the general election is a federal issue. It is not a state issue. And therefore, it is very, very wrong and improper and very unlawful for Governor Wicke to begin to put impediments on the part of the other different political parties. Uh, I will enjoin them, the other parties, as law abiding citizens, to go to court and contest all those impediments and all those things that Governor Wicke is trying to put on their, on their path. You will also remember that before now, before he started rolling out this is dry, draconian uh, orders and, um, and, uh, and all that, he had uh, been uh, dealing even with members of his own political parties that he suspects are not uh, supporting him or are not in his camp. And I say this, uh, Governor Wilke should remember that we used to have a lot in uh, the River State who was powerful, who was all powerful. He was also like God. But immediately power slipped through his hand, he became an ordinary person. Come May 2020, come June 2023, Wilke will remember and Wilke should know he will also revert back to an ordinary citizen. And some of the things, some of the steps, some of the other that uh, he's been rolling out now will come back to haunt him. Remember, uh, there's what you call the law of the karma. If you have yourself put impediments of other people, if in future political, we can also have a political ambition, but he wants to contest the election uh, for other offices or whatever, like the president is as his then people can also begin to put impediments on his path. You should be able to do things that they will not be scared of. Oh, all right. Tunde Kola Wale. Tunde yes, Kola Wale. Tunde, let's yes, quickly please. take a look at um, another headline. It's on the Punch all newspaper. Right. Private jet owners to sue the government over 30 billion naira task. Uh, task. That's uh, very interesting because uh, you have about uh, 91 private jet owners. It's a combination of uh, different persons, caliber persons in the society. And, and they are saying that they are taking the government, you know, they're suing the government to court because uh, they are, the cost of uh, import duties is running to over 30 billion naira. Well, for the airline, it is um, an industry that ordinarily should be doing well in Nigeria. Take, for example, the number of individuals who are private jets in Nigeria. The number of companies that are private jets in Nigeria also know that um, there is hardly any airline flying in the world that doesn't come and go uh, from Nigeria. But besides all this, besides, besides all these advantages and all that, you and I would know that the basic fuel in the whole, I mean, uh, in the way Nigeria, the basic fuel is the most expensive in the whole of uh, West Africa. We also don't have an aircraft maintenance hangar in Nigeria. Here as a tiny country like Ethiopia, I uh, have. I agree with the airline operator and some of these jet owners and all that, that government policies and programs with regards to the Nigerian airline, I mean, with regards to aircraft uh, maintenance and all that in Nigeria, and um, commercial flights and what have you, it's not favorable at all to investment. It's not favorable at all to anybody operating a successful uh, airline. Remember not too long ago, too, some of these foreign airlines wanted to withdraw from Nigeria because um, the money that they make in Nigeria, which they have to repatriate either in dollar, pounds, or euro, the CDN was unable to transfer those money to their parent companies abroad. So there are all sorts of issues in there. And the reason we have some of these issues is that we have uh, um, uh, airlines who are not patriotic, who will put funders in the wheel of any business or any organization. In which they are not get bountiful resources in terms of uh, in terms of kickbacks, uh, in terms of uh, all these corrupt uh, practices. Uh, every attempt to run an airline in Nigeria has failed. When in actual fact and indeed the South South Africa, Nigerian people fly more than any other country in, uh, in Nigeria. So uh, the airlines, uh, the the private jet owners, and also the operators of airlines and all that. To put their foot down and ensure 
that the federal government do what is right. Look at the number of them in the airport we have in the country. All of them are lying I, I do. They are not professional. What they service is just the private jet of the governor to fly to Abuja and come back, and not the commercial uh, activities that you and I would have expected uh, uh, should be the focus. All right, thank you, Tundekolo. Let's look at um, uh, the security situation in the country. The, the, the Daily Trust uh, lead story is quite interesting. Uh, the president, Mount Buhari, is saying that uh, uh, because of the Russia-Ukraine war weapons, are being smuggled to the Lake Chad region. Of course, that's very important to the uh, security of Nigeria and regional stability, that Lake Chad region. Um, and he says he's calling for tighter border security. I think the, the countries of the multinational joint task force had a meeting uh, where the president made this known. What are your thoughts on this, this revelation by President Buhari that uh, because of the Russia-Ukraine war, weapons are, are being smuggled from that war into the Lake Chad region? Well, thank God uh, you mentioned the issue of security. I am not surprised that uh, that is uh, happening. You and I will know that when wars and upheavals are happening in certain places, those who are the merchants of blood, those who sell arms and ammunition, they will take advantage and they use it to order arms and ammunition for certain places, and they will go and sell it or go and dispose it in some other places. So if arms and ammunition that is destined for Russia or that is destined for Ukraine, is now landing or coming to the uh, the region. One shouldn't be too uh, surprised about it. But the question you want to ask, since President Buhari now knows that arms and ammunition and weapons, every weapon are coming from those places, what is the hope for him is for him, for them as a government, to tax those sources of, um, of weapons and where they are being uh, exported or where they are being imported, uh, or who is importing them and find a way to, to, to block it. It is not just enough to the crime work on the pages of newspaper without making effort to jam or to block those sources of uh, weapons. And you must also remember that uh, the Lichard uh, region uh, is not the only place in, it's not the only place where we have a problem. The Niger Delta is also one area. Even the Lagos environment is also not safe. Uh, too many times, our nomination described as, uh, as the ordinary goods and items have been found by the Nigerian customs to be weapons, to be ammunition and uh, war weapons. This is for the Niger Delta. So many ships anchor of the, of the port or in the high seas in some of those places and northern who are selling arms and ammunition and weaponry. So the bandits, so the Niger Delta military and all those merchants of death that we have all over the country. This government has talked too much and too long on issues okay. of armed proliferation. Today. And the weapon that is the, yeah. All right. Uh, just in a minute, let's share your thoughts on this other one. Right. It's, it's still on the punch. It talks about 87% of Niger's rural road being deplorable, uh, according to the World Bank. Over 200,000 kilometers of roads, and out of that, 87% in that fraction. So you have 40,000 kilometers of roads that are usable. What are your thoughts, especially when we practice, you know, a three uh, tier of government, the federal government, the state, and the local government? Well, let me say this as a way of uh, formalizing the whole thing. Look at the number of years it has been taking us to fix the Lagos by the express road. That is just a road that is less than 100 kilometers. And for almost 20 years, now we have not been able to, to, to fix that road. The road between Nokoja, Ukene, and Abuja, and uh, also very, very disposable. In fact, it's a nightmare traveling by road in Nigeria today. And that is one of those reasons why you find out bandits take advantage of the bad road to unleash mayhem on the people. The kidnappers take advantage of the bad road to unleash mayhem on the people. Most of the people that they attack, most of the people that they attack, and what are you? Are people ordinary men would have to drive in a very slow manner when they get to very bad portions of most of these schools where eventually they are brought and then uh, uh, kidnapped. Even though this government has been saying that it has done a lot with regards to infrastructure and all that, I am personally not impressed. I'm not impressed either in the way and manner or the infrastructure or the outlet or the investment they have made with regards to roads. I'm also not impressed even with the, with the railway lines that they say they are building. And uh, even the, the water um, transportation 
is almost comatose all over the country. Whereas when you go to countries like Netherlands and Nora, uh, water transportation, and also Singapore, water transportation is a very, very important means of uh, committing around all these uh, different uh, uh, places. Uh, you and I are traveling most of this time on some of these roads, and we know how deplorable all those roads are. We haven't done well with the gas road. Either at the local government level right, or at Tunde, the state level. We have to go now. Tunde Kala Wale, we really need to go, and that's because we're uh, really out of time. But we appreciate you and your thoughts this morning. Thanks for having me. Off the press. We look forward to sharing your thoughts Thanks as we we'll proceed. Me. All right. That's it. We've been speaking with Tunde Kola Wale. He's a legal practitioner. He's been very explicit with his thoughts on some of the major headlines on our paper on the National Dailies this morning. We'll take a break and when we return, it'll be time for us to delve into our first major conversation. Please stay with us.